Hi, hello, and welcome to another beer review. Now, this one wasn't a planned beer review because I bought the beers to actually, well, I had a plan to buy big bottle beers to basically review with kind of Aldi's kind of copies or kind of, uh, how would you say, uh, um, their kind of version, their kind of, uh, well, they're not going to say it's copy, I think it's kind of copying it to a certain degree, especially with the kind of how it looks and the design of the product, but at the end of the day, um, it was supposed to be big bottle versus big bottle, and I couldn't get the big bottles of the big brands, I could only get the kind of smaller four packs and the smaller bottles, but I thought, well, why not, I've got all these, um, small bottles just to kind of drink and get rid of and everything else and I thought well why don't I do a head to head between a big brand and a big brand so today we're going to do a left blonde versus a whole garden why not I don't know if anybody's done this before but we've got a wheat beer versus a blonde beer that has wheat and quite strong grain flavours and tones to the point is you almost may kind of think it's actually made from wheat although there is blondes that actually are contain kind of slightly they're made from the majority is made from barley and everything else but they do have malted wheat to help to kind of boost the slight wheat flavor some use yeast and hops to try and get more of a grain and wheat flavor and things like that but the whole idea of it is to have a kind of grainish, kind of wheatish, kind of uh, rustic. And that's the whole idea, it's to get that kind of abbey, kind of monastery kind of flavours. And the whole idea of the Belgian kind of abbey beers and monastery beers is to have that kind of more rustic, kind of uh, grainish, kind of natural, earthy kind of flavours. And both of these try and do that. Now they add other kind of things like whole garden adds botanicals and other things kind of flavours just to kind of mix it up a bit. So let's try them off and see what they're like. Did I do a, did I do a, that'll be the thumbnail hopefully. So anyway let's crack them open. I mean one is um, just to kind of recap the left for a four pack is roughly about £4.50 the whole garden is a four pack, is roughly about £5.50. So, there's a pound difference between the four packs. They're both 330ml bottles. The left is 6.6% and the whole garden is 4.9. So there's quite a, a difference between alcohol content. So let's start with the whole garden. We'll crack it open because it's got a pouring kind of uh, technique on the bottle that says you've got to pour two thirds of it out and then the last thirds you've got to spread them out in the bottle and then pass it back in the glass and that makes it perfect. So let's see. And I've actually got some more on glasses as well, so let's find out how this goes. Look at that. Oh. Now of course this is cloudy. It's like like, like the Scottish weather. That's cloudy. Right, so we've done that. Let's give it a, a bit of a slosh. It's unusual for me to have something like this in my, my right hand shaking it away. Right, well, let's see. Let's see, do we have the foam? Because I think this is what it's supposed to do is to build up the foam. Look at it. It's all foam coming out there. Oof. Look at it. Oh. Came in the bus. That's why I was late. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You can walk that one out for yourself. <laughs> I know there's a few people that watch these videos will absolutely get that joke very, very quickly because I've done kind of similar jokes to them before about it. You know, why was you late for the interview? I came in the bus. Why did that make you late? Well, apparently that's illegal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right. Enough of the jokes. So there you go. You've got the poor. That's the whole garden. It should be easy to distinguish between the two because um, the left is clear. It's not cloudy like the Scottish weather. Although it's a bit cloudy today and we're, we're down in Devon today. Right, although while we're talking about locations, there might be a change to location in the next few videos. I'm not going to say where and I'm not going to say why. 
but hopefully we'll have some on location reviews coming up quite soon and uh, it will be outside of the UK mm -hmm. so stay tuned and see what piss water I'm going to be drinking wherever I'm going <laughs> right let's get the left port now the left works on a straight basis is just pull the bloody thing and never mind your pretentious bullshit it doesn't actually quite say that on the label but I'm sure if there was space for such a small bottle and such a small label they probably would have now the whole garden is actually brewed in Belgium I've got an itch now where is the left blonde where's it born Oh, they do love it, don't they? So yes, it's brewed in Belgium by InBev, yeah, there we go. Now, one of the things is that the left is actually brewed at the same brewery as Still Artois. And it's not some sort of kind of, oh, it's still brewed in the original Abbey Brewery and everything else. And it's still kind of, you know, a colloquial style brewing system. It's not. It's a mass produced system and it's actually fully automated as well. So you just dial in your recipe and the bloody mach machines just do everything for you to, to a certain degree. So, yes, um, it's mass produced. It's produced in the same brewery as... Uh, it's still Artois and uh, well, make of that what you will, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But anyway, there we go. Did I say who does actually the whole garden? I never actually said who actually did whole garden, did I? So again, it's A, B and Bev. Right. Is it saying about that? I don't know. Ingredients, water, maize, which is probably one of the reasons why they're actually using maize to kind of more of a, a grain kind of flavour rather than the wheat. But yes, we've got malted barley, sugar, sugar and hops. There we go. Malted barley stroke sugar. Hmm. Kind of interesting. But yes, they're using maize or gerst. So, anyway, these are two beers, one blonde and one wheat. Now, I'll be totally honest, the whole garden is quite a, a light, cloudy beer, as you can see. Whereas the blonde actually looks a bit darker, you know, from that point of view, from the left. So, smells. Getting some light wheat and uh, green. Teeny, 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 still a little bit of malt, very light malt, very, very light, and that's really it. Now, again, this has got supposed to have coriander in the brew, and it's got orange peel as well with the whole garden. Neither of which you can actually smell, actually, in the aromas. Of course, that might change, obviously, in the tasting. Now, what are we getting from the left? left we're getting we're getting kind of strange we're getting that kind of slight acidity so I'm getting I'm getting wheat and grain but again that could also be the maize kind of giving you that kind of you know false wheat aromas and uh, you are getting the grain and you're getting a slightly kind of what we call the salt so it's slightly stringent or acidy so you're getting that ever so slight kind of freshly chopped tomatoes kind of situation as well. So, which do we go with first? Right, I'm going to go with the whole garden first because it should be lighter because that's what would be my kind of major kind of, uh, how would you say, uh, view on whole garden is that I just feel that the wheat flavours are just too light they need to be a little bit stronger. but. Right, let's break it down. Now 
You're getting wheat and kind of grain from the front of the mouth and a little bit of sweetness, it's a very light sweetness. It moves on to the mid tongue. You've still got the grain, you've still got the sweetness. The grain is just slightly dissipated a bit, just lightened up even more than the front. So it's like almost like your mouth has got acclimatised, so when it goes on to the kind of mid tongue, your kind of mouth is a bit more used to it, so the, the wheat and kind of grain flavour has lightened a bit. But then you start getting ever so slight accents, just little accents, or maybe it's just slight lemony, slight citrus kind of uh, vibes. Not real citrus, not like citrus that you're getting from the hops that you would get as, as a bitterness, or not kind of citrus as you would get from adding peel and that type of stuff, so you're getting the kind of the sweet oils. You're just getting a kind of accent, and again, it's not real. I think it's coming from the coriander that you're getting. These kind of slight lemony, slight kind of false citrus, kind of um, light tangent flavours. And uh, yeah, I think that's coming from the coriander, because of course it adds the same type of situation of ground coriander seeds to cooking. And then on the aftertaste, the sweetness goes into the aftertaste and it just slightly dissipates and drops off a bit. And you're just getting a slight bitterness, you're getting, you still with the grain there, and the sweetness just slightly drops off a bit and you're just getting a little bit of bitterness there. And I think that's maybe might be down to the kind of orange peel, or maybe a little kind of down to the kind of orange peel and down to the hops as well. But a very light bitterness, but you just know it's a light kind of change. But what you do notice is and I maybe said this in other reviews that I've done with the, the whole garden. There's a slight kind of acidity there. Just ever so slight acidity just in the aftertaste. We just kind of, you know, it provides a little stringence to the mouth. And what it does is that kind of gives you that kind of dryness, that little kind of crispness, that refreshness that you get. That's what really makes the drink refreshing, is just to give you that little kind of slight acidity at the end that just kind of gives you the crispness that you get in beers or lagers predominantly a good lager should have that little bit of acidity at the end just to give, just to give that crispness that kind of refreshing kind of aftertaste because what it does is it just slightly you know gets the world mouth kind of watering a bit ready for the next sip so it kind of almost kind of draws you in you kind of drags you in to say like go and have another one have another drink have another drink and that, that's what it's a bit like and that's that kind of refreshness and kind of uh vibe you get and it's down to the slight acidity in the aftertaste and yeah it, it's a nice beer again normally compared to other wheat beers i just would like it to have a bit more wheat flavor like i said it's a, it's a good wheat beer to start from beginners just to kind of start off with and see whether they're going to like that situation and it gives them a, a good starting point but when I compared it to the Aldi version, well, the Aldi version was just completely lacking in the, the kind of wheat flavours to the point the whole garden was like, hey, we got loads of wheat and you've got none. And yeah, fair play to it from that point of view. And it won it quite easily from that point of view because as a wheat beer, it actually tasted of wheat compared to, I think it was a Hoflegen or Hoflegen um, from Aldi. So let's get into the left. Now the left is, a stronger alcohol so it should have a slightly stronger flavour that's why I started off with the whole garden first give it a chance because it is a 4.9 compared to a 6.6 .6. so we expect certain flavour profiles to be stronger in this than the whole garden so let's give it a chance yeah right Interesting. I mean, you have two, these two beers kind of side by side. One's got kind of barley and maize and one's got barley and wheat. And the whole garden's barley and wheat and uh, the left is barley and maize. So they are kind of really pushing the kind of grain flavours. But straight away I noticed There's more of an alcohol 
kind of flavour to it with the, the left. So it's giving me a slightly kind of what we call alcohol, slightly kind of uh, chemical kind of flavour over the whole garden. Just because, I'm not saying it tastes chemically, it's just because it's got a higher alcohol content that is coming across ever so slightly as, you know, as chemically, but it's not chemically, but it just because it's alcohol, alcohol is a kind of uh, industrial cleaner as well, and it's just going to give you that kind of slightly sterile, you know, flavour compared to the whole garden. But let's see what flavours are actually in it. So at the start, I'm getting sweetness and grain. Oh, excuse me. It's going into the mid-tongue. And as it goes onto the mid-tongue, we're getting sweetness. That, I mean, it is kind of strange because the maize is almost giving wheat flavours. It's getting, it's getting grainy wheat flavours. You're not getting corn flavours. Like you would do, because maize is basically, is it, you know, it's, it's an Indian corn as it used to be known as. Um, uh, and yeah, it's coming across more wheaty than actually kind of corn. But there's that underlying sweetness, and again, that could be coming from the actual maize, because maize obviously will obviously have a, a, a sweeter tones as well. So it doesn't have to rely so much on malt to give sweetness. So. You're getting sweetness and grain, moving on to the mid-tongue, you're getting more kind of wheatishness kind of flavours. But you're also getting that kind of, you're starting to kind of notice that this is a higher alcohol content. You don't notice it straight away at the front of the mouth, but you start noticing that it's a higher alcohol content in the mid-tongue because you are just getting that kind of raised kind of uh, flavour profiles in relation to the alcohol which of course can come across slightly chemically um, from that point of view but of course if you're drinking it like if I was comparing this to a beer of a similar um, alcohol content then of course this wouldn't stand out but because I'm comparing it to an alcohol beer of 4.9 then of course I mean this is 1.7% higher than the other so you're going to get some of that in the flavour. Now the aftertaste. Now this is the thing with Lef and the Blonde compared to other Blondes. That makes it a slightly bit unique or maybe slightly unusual if you would depend on your but it just makes it easier to identify Lef if you was comparing Blondes. As when it goes into the aftertaste the sweetness just kind of dissipates quite quickly and you're just left with this slight bitterness there. Now you don't have the acidity that you have with the whole garden so you don't have that kind of refreshing kind of crispness. There's a bit of crispness there, maybe a slight acidity but what you do notice is you've still got the kind of grainy flavours, the sweetness goes I'm out of here, I've had enough, I've done my bit. And you're just left with a little bit of greenishness, a little bit of bitterness. And it just that gives that little bitterness, which is unusual because if you try other blondes, whether from France or from Belgium, you don't really get that kind of bitterness in the aftertaste. And that's what makes left blonde quite identifiable. If I was doing a kind of blind taste test, I could probably identify the left because all I need to do is look for that bitterness at the end. There's that light kind of, it kind of kills the, the kind of, that's what probably does it. It's like with blondes and things like that, including also with the whole garden, because of the acidity, it just gives that kind of crispness, that kind of crisp finish, as they call it. You don't get the crisp finish so much with the left because you have that bitterness instead. It's just like a little twist at the end. You're thinking, oh, here we go, here we go. Gonna, whoop. Oh no, I, I wasn't expecting that. And it just makes it just slightly unusual, slightly unexpected. And it just gives a little bit of bitterness. And yeah, that's how you identify left within a blind taste test. You just look for that little bitterness, that little bit of finish. 
We're not talking about strong bitterness. We're not talking about huge bitterness. We're not talking about IPA citrus bitterness or kind of even like a, a bitter ale kind of bitterness. But it's just a kind of like, I think it, it just, because you expect it to go, and then you expect, you know, like, the wheatness is there, the sweetness is pumping it off, you expect the acidity to come through to give that little bit of kind of crispness and refreshing kind of finish and it's like, no, bitterness. That's unusual. So, you, so, so that's how it's done. And that's how to kind of identify left. Mmm. Now, here's the thing. How would I mark them? Well, I marked them both 6 out of 10 in their individual kind of reviews because this was reviewed with uh, This was reviewed with uh, St. Pierre from Aldi and I gave it a 6 out of 10 whereas I gave the St. Pierre because of price and everything else and all that I gave it 6.5 I gave this 6 out of 10 compared to its head-to-head -head with Hoffigan from Aldi and that ended up at a 4.5 so it won it quite convincingly. Mm. Now out of these two Belgian beers which would I prefer? I appreciate the subtlety of the whole garden to the point is that um, head to head together, tasting them together, I would keep whole garden as a six, but I would slightly drop the left blonde down to a five. If you look at it from a point of view, they're two different beers, they're Belgian beers, they're two different styles of Belgian beers, they both have quite strong kind of grain flavours, one based on wheat, one one based on beet, wheat and barley, which is the whole garden, and one based on maize or Indian corn and barley, which is the left. One with a lower alcohol content, 4.9 for the left and 6.6, .6, no, 4.9 for the whole garden and 6.6 .6 for the left. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking which one would I prefer to drink? And I've got to say the whole garden is the one I prefer to drink, which is unusual because it's one of the ones that I probably would avoid in pubs and everything else because one is overpriced and I feel it just doesn't have enough wheat flavour. But compare them head to head on the grain flavours, the alcohol, everything else, all as a package. And remember, left is cheaper for more alcohol content. I have to give it to the whole garden. So I'm going to say, and it's enough to say I'm going to give Lef a 5 in this review comparison. Normally, if you're looking at Blondes, I'm going to give Lef a 6. If it was better priced and everything else and all that, I would probably give it closer to a 7 um, from that point of view. But, Belgian beer to Belgian beer, I'm going to say I'm going to give it to the whole garden, which I'll be totally honest, kind of shocks me because I actually expected the left to win. But out of the two, and this being a low alcohol content compared to the left, it's actually more refreshing to drink. And overall, it's just nicer. So yeah. So if you're looking to kind of have a foreign kind of Belgian beers, yeah, the left is a nice blonde, but there's other types of blonde from Belgium. There's also blondes from um, France as well, especially the Alsace and the Grand Est region as well. And have a, have a look about it. I know it's a case of the left has a good reputation and it does have a good reputation. I think that maybe that, a lot of that reputation is now based on marketing and everything else. Because you see the left marketed and pushed a lot more than say whole garden. Whole garden was popular probably closer to the kind of late 90s, early noughties. And yes, you'd go into a lot of trendy bars in London and be like, whole garden! And had that kind of very style kind of 
kind of angle or kind of glass system that they use and everything else. But I'll be totally honest, right now, if I could basically have another bottle of either of these, it would be the whole garden. 6 out of 10, consistent. This drops down to 5 out of 10 just because of its uh, company it's keeping right now. And uh, yeah, I prefer this to this. Go fuck you. Anyway, I hope that helps or maybe adds to the confusion. But try a whole garden, try a wheat beer compared to the blonde and see what you like. Try both, try them after each other. If you can go into a bar or if you're going to the local supermarket, get yourself a whole garden, get yourself a left, try them out and see which one you prefer. Anyway, thanks for watching, cheers and bye for now.